Hey everyone, it's Robert Holland. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Godox V100. Now, I don't want this to be a review of the V100, and I'm not gonna be comparing it to any other products because I have something else planned for that. Instead, today, I wanna talk about the big departure to the touchscreen display and what that's all about because that is the story with this light. However, it does help for you to know some basic things about this light. This is essentially the new flagship speed light, and it has all of the flagship properties. What does that mean? It means we've got the lithium ion battery with a touch Type-C charge port on it, giving you up to 400 full power flashes. Recycles in about 1.2 seconds. We've got the PB960 battery port right here if you need faster recycle than that. We have a port for the fill flash option if you'd like to add that on. I've covered that already in the V1 Pro video. Round head with the magnetic accessory attachments. As the name suggests, we got 100 watt seconds, making it more powerful than any of the other speed lights that Godox offers. Same rotation and reverse articulation like we we've had on a few generations of speed lights now. And also some tech on the inside to increase the compatibility with the global shutter of the Sony A9 III. But all of that is relatively minor compared to the massive departure in going full touchscreen. Well, 90% touchscreen. We do still have one dial on the back for making adjustments. Now, if we go back a couple of years to when I was comparing the Godox FJ80 versus the Godox V1, I said the touchscreen of the FJ80 is, it's not it, right? <laughs> I didn't think it was it. You had to tap these sections or tap integers to kind of change the power level. And I said, we don't need touchscreen until it gets as good as an iPhone screen, which means it's fully interactive and you can just swipe around to create an accurate power adjustment. And that's pretty much what we have here. We can just touch and start sliding left to right. We've got full fluid control. We can tap for a tenth stop control and we can also hit the center button and use the dial so that we still have a physical control of this flash. And the touch screen works great in other instances too. For instance, we have a screen that I can swipe down from the top and that gives me access to things like turning high speed sync on, turning the sound on or off, turning the modeling lamp on and controlling its power, locking it or using stroboscopic mode. With a single tap, I can switch between manual and TTL. Very easy and intuitive control of the zoom. If I tap the power button, I can choose from using this as a single unit, using this to send out a signal to other lights like I am right here or setting this up to be a receiver, a off-camera flash group. It's very easy to switch the group, just tapping on the group, super intuitive stuff, right? And we've got those colors that have now made their way on these Pro 2 lights, as well as a new trigger like the X3. Wireless options such as channel and ID are in their own dedicated menu now. And of course, we've got custom functions, which looks a lot cleaner than you would find on previous devices. Also, if you're not a fan of the fractions, we can change to the integer power settings, which is really nice. Doing things like turning off camera groups on and off is really easy. You can switch between TTL and manual by simply doing a long press, which is really about one and a half seconds. It's not too long at all. And then when it comes to controlling the power, really nice. We still have that fluid access to power control. Now, I was a little hung up the first time that I went to use this. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm blocking my own power level and I can't really see it with my finger in the way while adjusting it, but I learned that you can kind of press and then just hold below it and then you can move left and right, see your power level while making that adjustment. Now this full touch screen like this and on the X3 transmitter, this is what I meant. This is what I meant in the video years ago when I said you gotta nail it as well as the iPhone, right? We've gotta have that full swipe to control power level and have the space necessary to make those adjustments. They knocked it out of the park. They went from having relatively archaic displays on all of their products to just pushing past what everybody else in the industry is doing and offering something truly great, provided you're into touchscreens. But there is one thing missing from this V100 that I think would benefit it so much, and that is third stop control. What? Why, why don't we have third stop control? We have 10 increments in between each fractional power level. You can make an argument for wanting that level of precision, but for people who are often just bouncing these or want them to align with their camera settings, which are third stops, they just stick in third stop controls, which is when you have like one eighth, one eighth plus 0.3, one eighth plus 0.7, and then you would go up to a quarter. You only have two increments in between each full stop power level. In fact, if I flip into TTL, that's all we have because the TTL system doesn't have 10 stop controls, so we have to use third stop controls. But there's no setting in here to only have third stop controls and that would make the manual power level so much more accurate. If you think about it, if we have what, 
nine levels of power range, each with 10 stops in between. That means we've got 90 increments across this whole power level. Whereas if we only had third stops, that would mean we only have 27. It's almost four times more accurate to dial into the power level that you want. I really think Godox needs to add this. I'm really surprised that it's not here because it's in a lot of their other products already. That's an option that you can flip between third stop control and 10 stop control, as well as sometimes altering the minimum power of the device. Right now, I give this thing in my early use of it like a 9.5 out of 10 but I need to see that feature added and that would just make this an absolutely stellar product. All right, that's all of my insight for today. Like I said, I've got a dedicated kind of combo between review and comparison coming up and incorporating this V100 versus some of the previous Godox speed lights. So be on the lookout for that if you're interested in more of the tech specs. Otherwise, you can use this video to ask any questions that you might want included or covered in that review. Take it easy, guys.